I the asshole for telling my husband I'll use my maiden name for our baby if he misses the birth? I'm 37 weeks pregnant. Due to health complications during pregnancy, I've been told by multiple doctors that I might have to give birth next week instead of two weeks from now. Furthermore, that I may go into labor this weekend or any time leading up to it. Because of the health complications, I'm having a C-section and my doctors don't want me laboring. So should I go into labor, they're most likely pushing me through an emergency C-section. My husband knows all this. However, he's holding on to the 2% chance they gave him that the baby could last the two weeks. His sister is also pregnant four weeks behind me and her baby shower is this weekend. It's an hour away and that's without traffic. Am I the asshole for telling my husband I'll use my maiden name for our baby if he misses the birth? Weeks ago, I declined for both of us because it didn't seem like a good idea. It turned into a fight as there are multiple reasons that should I go into labor, it's just a bad situation for him to be that far away. Husband wants to go and support his sister and see his family and says I'm keeping him on a short leash for something that's probably not going to happen. I said maybe he's right and nothing will happen, but there's a risk that he could be late and even miss the birth. I said if he makes that choice, then I would give the baby my last name. He said I'm an asshole for keeping him hostage and I'm always planning for worst case. He then added that my thoughts are going to trigger labor more than anything. I took myself on a movie date to see In the Heights and I went to the movies one other time this year and it was amazing because I just went in and I sat in the middle of a completely empty theater and if anybody did buy a ticket I was told that they were required to choose a seat that was at least six seats away from me at all times and I was like this is amazing this is how movies should be all the time but now people are coming back to the movie theaters and they don't know how to act anymore and it's pandemonium i went in and there were some ladies sitting one of them was in my seat and i just thought that's fine i'll just sit a few seats down we'll be good we were not all good because this lady came in with a bunch of kids and i thought oh how cute they're having a family day and then they walked straight to me and i thought oh no and she said you're in my seat and i was like i'm sorry those ladies were in my seat and so i just sat here but i'll go i'll go talk to them it'll be fine and so i went over to the ladies and i said hey um you're actually sitting in my seat i was just gonna sit down there anyway but then this lady came and she wanted her seat so um could, could you please just scooch down so i could sit in my seat and they just stared at me they did not say anything and i showed them my ticket and i was like see i my seat's g7 um, and you're sitting in G7, so if you guys could just scoot down, it would be it would be great, because then we'd all have our seats. And they kept staring at me. It was this weird stare-off, and all I could think was like, oh, I just wanted to come to the movie theater and sit in a dark, cold room and eat my giant pickle, and then deal with the gastrointestinal repercussions of eating said giant pickle in private. But here I am, squabbling over a seat, and some of you might be thinking, why don't you just move to a different row? The answer is I paid an extra four dollars to sit in a recliner and that was the only row with recliners and four dollars is a big investment that goes far at Taco Bell. Finally one of the Karens just kind of glanced over to this one seat that was in between the family and in between them and I thought fine I'll just sit there and so I'm sitting in between them and the cute little four-year-old that was on my one side couldn't keep up with the movie and so she was talking the whole time very loudly and I was just like this is fine this is fine this is fine and I was judging that four-year-old because she had an entire bucket of cotton candy that she wasn't even eating and I did consider moving at that point but I thought what if the mom knows that I'm moving because I'm annoyed with her child heaven forbid I do anything that could potentially maybe hurt a stranger's feelings then the four-year-old started eating popcorn with her mouth open and I was like nope nope that is my limit. So I moved a few rows back into the plebeian seating and ate my giant pickle, which decided to make an early exit about an hour later. And I made the whole theater smell like a ferret cage. And when the lady sitting in my seat looked over her shoulder at me, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Is the smell wafting? Good. I've been waving it at you with my mask. One October, I went to my boss. Uh, at a bookstore I worked at and I told him that I needed to talk with him about taking a few days off because I was getting a surgery and I needed some recovery days and he said how many days off do you need and I was like okay hear me out normally the recovery time for this surgery is um it's two to four weeks but I can heal super fast I can be back in one week so all I need is one week off and he said well, what is a surgery even for? You don't look like someone who needs a surgery. And I should have said, that's none of your business. But I didn't, I didn't, I'm an over explainer. I told him all the details and he said, oh, so this is not time sensitive. 
And I said, well, technically no, but I'd rather do it sooner rather than later. And he said, you know what? I do be, I think you can wait until January. Okay. So I'm going to have to say no on the time off. And I was just like, okay. Then I came to him again and I said, could I, could I maybe have the day after Thanksgiving off? That would be nice to go see some family. And he said, no, if I gave you the day after Thanksgiving off, I'd have to do it for everybody. And I can't do that. So everybody has to come in and work on Thanksgiving. That's the only way it's fair. And I thought that's stupid. But then I went to him again and I said, could I please, my hair, could I please have the day after Christmas off so that I could fly home and visit my family? And he said, no. And when I told him I needed the extra day so that I would have time to visit my family, he said, you still have plenty of time to visit your family because luckily for you, you can close up the store at five o'clock on Christmas Eve. So you still have time to catch a 7.30, 8 o'clock flight to go see your family, spend Christmas morning with them. And then you can fly back Christmas night in time for your shift the next day. And I was just like, Larry, I shove books. I'm not an international supermodel. So I said, never mind. I'll just cancel Christmas this year. And he said, you know, this is all just part of being an adult, okay? I have to spend time working when I want to be with my family too. And I just thought, sir, you work a nine to five. And he came to me, because I think you could tell I was feeling frustrated. He said, good news, you're getting a promotion. And I said, that's great. That means I'm getting the raise I asked for. And he said, yeah, a whole extra 15 cents an hour. And I was like, oh boy, that's definitely worth canceling Christmas over. And he said, well, you're also getting a great new title for your resume. You're going from store section lead to store section manager. And I was like, yeah, now instead of telling people that at work, I organize CDs alphabetically, I can tell them that I tell other people how to organize CDs alphabetically. At that point, I realized I could put in my two weeks and be done with the job before Thanksgiving. So I went into his office the next day and I quit and he looked me dead in the eyes and he said, but why? Me and my boyfriend have been together since we were in university. We're both 23 and recently moved in together. We both went to our local university, so we both lived at home so we'd be able to save money. Around a year after we started dating, my boyfriend got a German Shepherd puppy. I've never been a fan of German Shepherds, but I'm a dog lover, so I wasn't going to tell him not to get one since we weren't living together yet. When we moved in, my dislike of German Shepherds was confirmed. The dog leaves hair all over the place, barks whenever someone walks by our house, needs extreme amounts of exercise. I could go on for hours. However, I was willing to put up with it since my boyfriend had otherwise trained him well. I now realize how stupid that was since the dog breed seems to have problems regardless of how well it's trained. I recently got a Rottweiler puppy and to say that I formed a bond with him would be an understatement. The German Shepherd, on the other hand, didn't take kindly to the puppy and would make its disdain for the dog known. We took the dog to the vet to see where the issue was coming from and she told us that some German Shepherds just don't get on with other dogs. My boyfriend suggested that we may have to rehome my puppy due to the German Shepherd's disdain of him and he could still find a good home since he was only five months old. The thought of rehoming something that I love for a dog I couldn't stand mortified me. And to think the only reason that I would be rehoming him would be because of another dog's nasty behavior didn't make the situation any better. I told my boyfriend there was no way I was rehoming my puppy and that I'd be willing to move out if need be. After days of arguing, my boyfriend took his dog to the local shelter. The house has been much quieter since and I can honestly say that it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. My sister, on the other hand, didn't hold the sentiment and actually referred to me as an evil bitch for putting my boyfriend in this position. Am I the asshole for making my boyfriend rehome his German Shepherd? Am I the asshole for pulling out of my brother's wedding because my old bullies will be there? My brother B is getting married to his fiance F who went to the same high school as me. I used to be mercilessly bullied in high school and didn't have any friends which led to a horrible period of depression and anxiety. I now mainly deal by suppressing those memories and cutting off contact with people I knew from high school. F used to be part of the mean girl clique who were especially terrible to me but to be fair she was more of a follower in the clique. She never directly bullied me but she used to laugh along with their clique when they made fun of me. When B started dating F I was shocked and had a hard time dealing with it because it brought back what her clique used to do to me. If I ever brought up something they did F would usually just laugh it off saying that she doesn't remember and that they were probably just young and stupid. It took a lot of convincing by B and a lot of time working on myself for me to finally forgive F and accept her as my brother's girlfriend. B and F are now engaged and B asked me to be his best woman. I accepted and even agreed to help out with F's side of the wedding events because her maid of honor has too much on her plate. The wedding planning has been going smoothly so far until F told me that she was going to invite her high school clique to her bachelorette party when she can have it. I immediately felt old anxiety come back and asked her if they'd be invited to the wedding too. She said yes and learning that nearly crushed me. I spent some time thinking about it and I don't think I could be at the wedding if those people are there. F at least never tortured me herself so I can handle it, but seeing her gang leaders again would very likely trigger my depression or worse. Send me into a panic attack at the wedding itself. I told B that I might need to pull out of the wedding because of that, but I can still help however I can with the wedding planning as long as I don't have to come in contact with F's gang. B is very upset and says I'm only thinking of myself and clearly I don't want to be at his wedding because I still don't accept F as his future wife. He also told me that I should move on from whatever happened in high school, but even if I try to do that, a high stress event like his wedding would be the worst time to test if moving on works. So, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for telling my sister to expect to go to school tomorrow with no friends? I, 17 female, have a little sister, 14, who's extremely spoiled. 
She doesn't like to share, she hates not getting her way, and most of all, she throws tantrums when told no. My parents refuse to address her behavior, so it continues. Today was the first time in years my sister had friends to hang out, and my mom got tons of snacks. My sister grabbed most of them, and one girl wanted gummy bears. My sister said no, but she had three bags, so I gave one of hers to her friend. She dropped all of hers on the ground. Am I the asshole for telling my sister to expect to go to school tomorrow with no friends? Started stomping her feet, whining about wanting them all. My dad made me give it back to her, so I gave her some fruit snacks instead. Then they were looking for a movie to watch, and the two girls agreed on one, but my sister wanted to watch a different movie. When I told her it was only fair that the girls got to pick, she got upset and went to tell again. Both girls said they wanted to go home, and my dad took them. I said if she continues to act this way, she'll never have friends and to expect to go to school tomorrow with none. She cried and my dad said I was out of line. 